Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Hi everybody, we're back <clears throat> to wrap up. Stu and I have been here for a day and a half and uh, they're shutting down the show floor. The keynotes are just about to start. Um, you know, no, normally we keep going, but uh, we're going to cut over to the keynotes very shortly. But Stu, I just wanted to try to summarize sort of the, the thoughts on Dell. Obviously the big stories here. One, uh, Dell going private. Uh, I think that is going to continue to be, <clears throat> not necessarily a theme, but it's going to continue to be a weapon that Dell utilizes to its advantage in terms of improving its agility, being able to craft a story uh, of, of positive momentum, uh, and share the highlights of the business that it wants to share that are going to resonate with customers and analysts and media and so forth. And people are going to try to dig in and ask those hard questions and <clears throat> Michael's just going to be able to say, well, we don't divulge that information. <laughs> and it, it's, I think it's just a beautiful thing and it's going to be really interesting. It's going to frustrate some people. Um, but I think that my view, Stu, is that this company is really well positioned to do some damage and create value um, for the industry, not only for its customers, uh, but also for its partners, its employees, its, its shareholders, of which have been narrowed down to just a select few. <clears throat> I think it's going to emerge as one of the biggest stories in tech, um, you know, five, six years from now when we look back. Yeah, Dave, as, as you said this week, uh, Dell's been able since they're private to really write their own narrative. Uh, I loved at the media event, uh, somebody did ask Michael, they were talking about a certain area, and he's like, well, can you share you know, a revenue-related number for this? And Michael just said, no. And <laughs> the entire room just started cracking up because he's like, you know, right, I don't have to. I can do whatever yeah. I want. Um, but what is this move going to do to change, you know, the employees, uh, you know, change the partnerships, change everything that's happening. Actually, Dave, through the show floor right now, there's actually a ton of people because since Dell's right nearby, they actually bring in, you know, you know, busloads of employees to enjoy a little bit of the event, uh, which is really good. A uh, comment I made was there is not a show that I've ever been to that does a better job of integrating kind of the local coach, culture and the company culture into the event. The reason that Dell holds this event in Austin every year, uh, which is a smaller and you know, for some people a little bit tougher to get to, is because it's right nearby. Um, and you know, there's the food, the music, uh, you know, the drink, and the tech, and all their employees. So it's right here. Uh, you know, it probably saves a couple of dollars on shipping equipment, but it's not for that. It allows them to showcase the company and involve the employees. Uh, I remember when I worked at EMC for a number of years, Dave. The one year that it was in Boston, uh, when I was there, you know, they did bring people in, and as, as just kind of the all the employees got to be part of it and it was special. So Dell does that every well, year. Well, I think a good that's a great point, too. Yeah. I really do, because we do a lot of shows. This is uniquely uh, Austin, you know, it's uniquely Dell. It reminds me of In For It at New Orleans. Um, you know, it had a similar sort of vibe to it. A lot of shows are in Vegas, you know, we love Vegas. Um, <laughs> San Francisco, Moscone, but they're big. They, t they tend to be very similar. Uh, you know, each company has their own flavor, but the venue is, I think, a real differentiator here. Now. Now, on the flip side, I want to be a little critical here. So what I want to see out of Dell is really more productive R&D. Um, they make a lot of acquisitions. Integration is really hard. I mean, if you look at how long it took Oracle, now Oracle, that's software, um, you can argue it's even harder, but it took probably nine years to get the Fusion apps, you know, <laughs> integrated and out, and still people would, would maybe criticize that. Look at, look at EMC, Stu, your former company, never really has succeeded in integrating, so it comes out with Viper as another layer to try to integrate all this stuff. It's been an age-old challenge uh, for companies. IBM has it, you know, NetApp is the one company um, because of its single architecture, but of course, then it has trouble scaling, and that runs into challenges, so it's got to buy, you know, uh, it's, it's got to uh, you know, integrate other, other acquisitions. It's, it buys Ingenio. So, very hard integration, and that really is, in my mind, Stu, Dell's opportunity. Um, we had Alan on, he talked about the bringing together of Equalogic and Compellent into a single stack. I think more work can be done there. Same thing on the server side with the integrated systems, what they called engineered solutions. So I want to see a really productive use of that R&D. I think clearly Michael Dell has created an M&A team that's quite good. Um, how they use that R&D, I think, is going to 
really be uh, a potential differentiator for this company, but yeah, I think they got to do better there. Yeah, Dave, uh, I, I do agree with you, you there, and a word that kept coming up over and over in the presentations and in our interviews was choice. And there are multiple solutions, and not, it's not one size fits all. I, I mean, use NetApp as an example. They are, you know, not just a single operating, they've got the single operating system with ONTAP, but they've got the Ingenio stuff over on the side, and uh, you know, they have to kind of bolt on or add little pieces there. Dell is placing a lot of bets, and it's it's not going to be easy to be great at you know a dozen things. Uh, one of my favorite lines of the week uh, was talked about these massive waves that are coming in, and Dell said they're the guy in the jet ski helping to pull you in to catch those big waves. But boy, there's a lot of waves crashing down, and you know we're not sure you know how many places Dell can be really successful in and drive revenue and drive value. Um, you know. Big opportunities, as we talked about, the engineered or converged solutions, where they've got, you know, their in-house stuff like the new FX2, the new Nutanix OEM. They've uh, put money in Nixenta uh, and all those pieces, and then the, the public cloud, the new cloud marketplace, which is really intriguing. It, it's the only one uh, that that really, the only big IT company that doesn't own their own data centers. Not looking, as Michael said, I, I'm not looking to compete with the public clouds. Um, but you know, long term, is that going to be something that they're going to and look back and say, wow, you know, we missed a really big wave and big opportunity to get there, and uh, we could be left, you know, sitting on the beach. Well, it's interesting. A lot of folks have said that, Joe Tucci has said that in the past, um, and then I guess he gets a pass because it's actually VMware doing the competing. Um, uh, but it, it, they've got an EMC branded version of that, and they've said, yes. no, we will have, you know, right. we've got so, public but, offerings. But my point is that that was yeah. a little bit of a flip flop, and companies have to do that. I'm not saying companies shouldn't, shouldn't do that, I think, um, but, but Dell right now, is is you know pretty much focused on not building out its own data centers, which is a vastly different strategy yeah. from IBM, and, HP, and, 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 and VMware. A lot of the real money, and there's there's plenty of margins in putting things on premises. But that being said, there's huge growth in the public cloud. Yeah, heck, Dave, next week we're going to be uh, in Vegas for reInvent, so you know we will see just how far the public cloud has grown over the last year. Yeah, this is going to be a major Kool-Aid injection next week. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about Dell is the software component. I think this is a hidden story inside of Dell. It's a, it's a nearly $2 billion business. It comprises security systems management and information management, and underneath each of those, a lot of assets that the company has developed. Uh, they've got some development shops with their OpenStack activity. Uh, they've got a good DevOps story. Uh, their, their big data story is evolving. They've got a strong partnership with Cloudera. Uh, Tom Riley was up on stage here. So, you know, a, a lot of big data, Stu, is powered by Dell servers and internal Dell storage. And so they're in a actually really interesting position for a lot of these big data opportunities, particularly in my view, helping guys get started. Because as we know, most companies aren't really digging into big data you know, the way the leading edge companies are, all the stories that you hear, most companies are sort of, just sort of getting started, and they need quick start solutions, and Dell's the perfect company to provide those, and they have services around it. So I think that's an, an untapped opportunity, un, which I think Michael Dell very clearly understands. I'd like to see it get more into the marketing, and and have Dell explain it a yeah, little bit. I, I mean, Dave, interesting, you say, you know, almost $2 billion, you know, we don't know exactly what Dell's revenues are, but what's that, 3% of their overall revenue? Right. Which, you know, HP gets a lot of flack for only having 3% of their enterprise business being software. Right. So, huge opportunity, absolutely, <laughs> software is where it's at. All right, Stu, well, that's a wrap. Um, we got some people to thank. Uh, Michael Dell in particular, who's the one who got us here two years ago, uh, John Furry and myself, he personally invited, and he made, a, he made that happen. Uh, along with you know our good friend Tarkin Maynard of Nexenta. Um, Marius Haas as well was really helpful, as was Sam. Uh, uh, Sam basically helped us at VMworld and sort of catalyzed this whole thing, uh, Sam, uh, Sam Greenblatt. Uh, and then, of course, Jeff and Heather, thank you for all your help with, uh, with getting us you know, here, getting us guests, keeping the machine running, so we really appreciate that. Uh, Mick, Mark, and Matthew, the Dallas crew, well done guys, really appreciate all your effort. Andrew, Art, Chris, Kristen, and all the writers back home, and of course, Jeff, John, and Greg out in uh, Palo Alto, really appreciate uh, all your back-end support. It makes this Cube machine hum. Next week, we're at reInvent, back in Vegas again, so, uh, so look on siliconangle.tv for all the, <clears throat> all the upcoming shows. All this content will be on siliconangle.tv. Check out siliconangle.com, we'll be writing up blogs with uh, videos inside those blogs in case you missed any of the content here. 
Um, and as well, check out wikibon.org for all the research. That's a wrap, thanks for watching everybody. This is theCUBE, we'll see you next week at reInvent. This is live from Dell World, bye for now.